Yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? I'm Brian. And I'm Monica. And welcome to our podcast, Backspace Nomads, <laughs> where every week we wander into the weirder parts of gaming, preview new game releases, and talk about what it's like to be a gamer. This is episode 41 of the podcast, and we're recording this December 21st. So let's get into the show. Monica, what have you been doing since we've been off? Um, I have been doing things like trying to manage my life. And then also I've been streaming a little bit more on our, I've, on our Twitch, our Twitch channel. And by a little I've bit more, that. I mean, I've, I've streamed twice and, um, really did a great job of, um, streaming twice. <laughs> I am so good at streaming two times. <laughs> that uh, I saw you playing uh, Romu, Ro- Rumu. I did. I played some of the games that we recommended last week. I played Rumu. It was really good. A few people said that they kind of started tearing up, and I felt a little bit of the same Ooh. the same way. Like Rumu is uh, that game that is about a um, robotic vacuum, mm-hmm. and I tell you what, it says it's about love, and there were some parts in there that were really touching and kind of disturbing. And I was like, I was like don't do this to me, Rubu. Don't yeah. do this to me. But I also played uh, They Are Billions. That game uh, looks super interesting to me. Yeah, it is a game that you will get a lot of lifespan out of. Rumu was about three hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are billions. Is you can spend a lot of time playing it, and um, it really, in in general, I think it's going to be a great game. I ha- I didn't get to sink my tink, my tink. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to sink my my teeth into it heavily. Yeah, but. <laughs> But I I did enjoy it so far, and I do plan on playing it more. So nice, I really dug it. Uh, I was jealous of you. I, I I intended to buy it, and then I saw you had. It. I was like, man, she beat me to it. Yeah, I did. Cause you're you're slow. You're just, slow, bro. Just a slow, you're slow, slow person. Um, um, outside of that, I have a personal like quick story. Uh, I've got oh, a lot of makeup okay. on my left eye, but as you know, Brian, um, and as the listeners and viewers will not know, um, I have a little, I had a little, this is just a human story. Okay. This isn't a gaming story. <laughs> I'm I just a, a human. I'm just a human, everyone, believe it or not. Um, I had a little tiny zit underneath my eye and I started messing with it and I've given myself a black eye. <laughs> so I have like, Brian noticed it when we were prepping before the show and said, Hey, it's, it seems like it's spreading <laughs> and I had to go deal with it, but it is, it's legit. Yeah. So be careful. Just a caution to all of our viewers out there who may still have, maybe experiencing for the first time acne mm, yeah, yeah. or experiencing for the billionth time the acne. Yeah. Don't, don't mess with any zits that are like kind of, you know, in the, the soft part underneath your eye. Don't do that. Maybe cause... you're in your thirties and feeling confident about your zit popping uh, prowess. <laughs> Just leave maybe, it alone. <laughs> maybe you're in your thirties. You think I've done this. I know what to do. You don't trust me. <laughs> Do not give yourself a black eye from popping a zit. Oh, the best part about the show prep is like as it kept going along, like that part of your eye just kept getting like darker and darker and darker. And more puffy. And I didn't know if I wanted to say anything because I didn't want to like mess with your confidence <laughs> or whatever. I was just like, oh man, here we go. Here it we go. was pretty bad. Yeah, it's starting to get pretty bad. But thank goodness for makeup. Yeah. So God bless. Makeup, whoever invented you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how about you? How was your week? Uh, pretty good. Gaming wise, I've been, uh, you know, perusing the Fortnite as I do. Um, I got into, <laughs> uh, perusing Fortnite as, I, as do. I do, uh, this game called the Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realm, which an Idol Champions game is where like you set up your party and you just let them do their own thing and they loot and they quest on their own and you just kind of like check back in on them. Um, so I've been letting that play while I've been doing a lot of like work in the side. And so it's supposed to be a game where like you don't pay attention to it, except that you pay all of your attention to it. 
because you're like, how's my party doing? Like every two minutes you're looking back at your party, you're like, well, maybe I can adjust this, move this mm-hmm. item around. And it just yeah. completely sucks all your work time out. But I've really been enjoying that. And then uh, I took a trip to the movie theater. And oh, I did you? I did. I, I, I had some free tickets lying around that I got from the workplace. And I said, well, I go enjoy a nice Star Wars saga with these free tickets. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the opposite of enjoying a Star Wars movie is, but I came pretty close to just out. I almost walked out of a Star Wars movie. I was so. You did not. I swear to God, there was a moment where I said, you know, I could just go wait out in the hall and I'll, you know, they can stop ruining this series for me. What a train wreck, terrible movie Star Wars The Last Jedi became. Last week you told me it was bad. You definitely undersold it to me. You were like, like cushioning me or like. I did not want to make anyone feel like they shouldn't go and make their own judgment call on it. Because I do think that there are going to be elements of it that hopefully are regained and retained in the next film. But in general, no, this one didn't do a lot of of assisting for me in, in really appreciating what they were trying to accomplish. Not only like are they like not accomplishing things, they are destroying characters and like storylines that you have loved and beloved throughout the years. Luke Skywalker, they completely destroy his character and who he is. I don't know. Why do you think? Uh, Well, Luke Skywalker was the guy who wouldn't kill his dad and saw the good in him. And like, no, er there's a chance for everybody. I can feel it. And then all of a sudden he's standing over Kylo Ren, Ben uh, Ben Solo, about to kill the kid in his fucking sleep. And, and, And what... When would Luke Skywalker ever do that as a character? Like just as a character, when he would do that. And yeah, if if he, you know, throughout the story that we haven't seen since the last films and then him now. By the way, spoilers, everyone. If you haven't watched it by now, get over yourself. Yeah, for real. But you have yeah, your opportunity. Yeah. If they like, if that was the how his character would turn out, that he would like, you know, almost kill someone in their sleep then they have to like walk us through that narrative. They have to show they us. They did though. They did it three times. All horrible <laughs> different scenes. Like instead of like exposition, like one character, <laughs> told, like it was like the exposition of scenes. They're like, no, this is what happened. It was like a Guy Ritchie film of how Luke killed. Like everyone had a different narrative of what really happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was terrible. Uh, I thought the way they handled uh, Ray's parentage and her Ray's whole character about like finding herself. I don't understand that. Uh, you know, what do you I, mean finding herself? Like, um, like she goes to Luke Skywalker for training and stuff, right? She mm-hmm. doesn't get any of that. And then all of a sudden she figures out who she is on the inside. And apparently is one of the greatest fucking force users we've ever known and can just dominate people. Like that, like she's amazing with a lightsaber. She can uh, beat all these fucking dudes. She knows how to lift huge rocks with the force all of a sudden. Like her, so she, they don't walk will, you through that. I will defend Ray a little bit in that instance, though I do agree that her powers are used completely. Um, it, it just seems like they, they, they scale up and scale down depending on what the movie needs. So yeah. I find that to be a huge, a huge issue. But I also uh, found that Ray not needing anyone would would really uh, coincide with someone who had that intense amount of of, of force within them. But like, why I, does she I, I have that? that? Huh? How is she just this amazing force user? And then they try and tell us her parents are no ones. We don't know. I think that the I think her parents being no ones might be a lie, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know yet. I can accept that that might be a lie, but I think that might be a lie, and I also think that Ray finding herself that you know is from is is coming from self reflection. Okay. And to be honest, having other people tell you what to do and who to be, you normally do not find yourself through that. Right, And I think she is an incredibly strong character. So I enjoy that element of her. 
Though I do think that the way that they abuse her, her supreme power, just it seems to fluctuate a bit based on the scene and what mm. the scene needs in order to get them to progress the story. Yeah, and I think they did this to her in The Force Awakens where like she was able to just to like go toe to toe with Kylo Ren with a lightsaber. Like what? Mm-hmm. Like she just is amazing all of a sudden with the lightsaber? Come on. The only thing I will say about this, about the entire film and why I would say that for the, the next film, I'm interested okay. because in, in any regard right now, I should be pissed off. I should be like, why did you have to show me Porg 17 fucking times screaming? <laughs> I don't care. And I'm not going to buy this stuffed animal, but I did feel that the most interesting element that they leave off with uh-huh. is if you think about this as a whole, the, the first order is now controlled by someone who has no control over his feelings, mm-hmm. over his purpose, yeah, and over who he is as a human. Right. He talks about letting things go, but that's because he's battling with letting things go. Mm-hmm. And now he's in charge of the entire First Order. Yeah. The um, resistance is dwindled down to relatively nothing. Yeah, thanks, Poe. But, but that being said, they're being run by someone who has a firm grasp on who she is, Mm -hmm. what she believes in, and what she stands for. Right. He has a much firmer grasp than than Kylo Ren does. Right. And so it's this interesting thing where it's like, the First Order is being run by someone who a lot of people are having a really hard time respecting him. A lot of people are having a really difficult time seeing him as a leader. They show that. He can't, he's having a hard time even seeing himself as a leader. You can tell he's feeling shame. Right. You can tell he's feeling shame. And Ray is like, I don't need anybody. I can do this. Yeah. See, I agree with you. That is an interesting, that that is is an interesting plot twist. It's very awesome. Um, That is a very good point. That is setting up some really cool things. But I think as story-wise, there's a lot of things that the director did that were like kind of like fuck you to JJ Abrams and fuck you to fans. Um, we spent an entire movie trying to find Luke Skywalker and Ray bringing this lightsaber to Luke Skywalker, right? Oh yeah. And they left us off on this big moment, like here's a lightsaber, and then he just like chucks us over his shoulder without saying anything and like bolts off. And that's indicative, I think, of the whole movie where they are trying to go for a joke to lighten the scene. The entire movie. Without yeah. letting like the characters have bigger moments and then letting like sprinkling in jokes here and there to kind of like lighten it up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. There is never a moment that they allow them to like sit in the moment and feel emotion. Yeah. Um, it would be like Darth Vader cutting off of Luke's hands and then dropping like a dad pun on his hand, you know, like, oh, gotcha, son. Um, yeah, I, I, I hated that. I did think that that was like a little uncomfortable. I agree with you. I went along with it, but I totally was like, man, that was such an epic end to the last film. Mm -hmm. And then now it's just being trashed. Yep. So yeah, I agree with you. I did. I, I felt in general as though a lot of the elements that we were introduced to. So let's, I guess... The last film, you were introduced to almost the likeness of the characters that you loved and adored. Yeah. And it was, it wasn't, it was gratuitous in that. They, they did not try to hide that. Yeah. But I said, okay, I get it. We're following a same pattern here, but I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. And this film did feel like they were trying to just shove that yep. back in whatever hole it came out of. Yep. And I, and like, I feel like this film, if you go back and watch the force awakens, it's, it's going to make the force awakens feel very meaningless. And like, you're going to be skipping a whole lot of parts. Cause like, why do you care about this stuff? It just means nothing to the overall story of the entire saga. I disagree with you. I think that's going to depend on the third film because I think that this film, the last Jedi, uh-huh 
might not even be a part of well like the order that you watch it in like you know how they they it might just be cut out well like i because there's not much in it that that ray's going to find luke skywalker now because luke does nothing for her as a character he trains her he gives her two very general knowledge things about the jedi that really don't it's meaningless her going to find luke is meaningless but think about this for the third film what if she just has those books she has the books I know, I understand that. But what if she has the books uh-huh. and you can just cut this film out? There is a very real they possibility. Wasted that time. That, that, oh. Yeah, okay, so maybe they wasted your time, but they they may re, they may they may re, you know bring Star Wars out of the ashes that it's currently in right now. And yeah. I'm okay with that. If the third film is fantastic and we can cut this one out, I will feel better about it than holding on to it and expecting it to be something for me. Well, like, and, and, like with that point, um, there's a lot of things in it that like really hurt. Like, you know, Luke Skywalker, who we've been waiting to see forever. He's a huge fucking character in the films, the entire, you know, trilogy. Um, the first is like based off him, the first part of it. And then you finally see him after all these years. And the dude doesn't even get in a lightsaber fight. He doesn't swing his lightsaber at all. He's just like a figment, like a force projection or whatever of his past self. And the part I almost walked out on is after he got attacked by all the like the big AT-ATs or whatever. And everything was shooting at him. And he walks in and he like brushes dirt off his shoulder. I just wanted to stand up and leave the theater. Like yeah. what Like what millennial crowd are you trying to like make this for? You're like, oh my God, he just brushed it off his shoulder. Uh. Did he just do that? Yeah, it, that oh. was difficult. That was difficult. So um, I, I at that point was like, "What are they doing right now?" But then when I understood that he was projecting, which I didn't under, I still don't know quite how I feel about his astral projection. Awful. I feel um, awful about it because that whole fight seems meaningless. I don't. I I didn't think it was meaningless nope. though. It did allow them to escape. I didn't feel that it was meaningless. But what I did feel as though his whole existence was just almost um, emo. It was. Yeah. It was this kind of you know frustrated. Giving just, up. He's like yeah, giving up, not wanting to be a part of things, and then all of a sudden, you know, he he does end up saving the day, and then he ends up disappearing, and it's like, why is he disappearing mm-hmm. when Princess Leia has died three times in this yes. film and continues to come back? Her floating back to the going. ship, get the fucking out of here! Yeah, it was bad. It was yeah. Like he never has like a Luke Skywalker moment where he's like the hope. And like whether he's inspiring other people, they do it like after the fact, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. which is just not his character. And I'm not saying I need like there are so much critiques like on Reddit and stuff where people are saying like, oh, this is not the story you wanted. I don't need the story I wanted or thought was going to happen to come true. But I'm someone who really like thinks about storytelling and character development. And you really have to respect the characters and earn the story that you tell. And what they did just felt very weak. Like Luke just dying at the end on his own by himself on a planet and just fading away into the forest just feels so out of step with that character and what he would actually do. I feel like what might have happened here is that if there was any character development, it happened with Kylo Ren and it happened with Rey. Yeah. And it was at the expense of pretty much any other character that they mm-hmm. had thrown in previously. There are characters that they introduced. I don't care about them. There are characters in, that they introduced in The Force Awakens, like Finn, who I at, at one point really liked. Yep. And now I don't care about him. And so it seemed like they threw a lot away in order to concentrate on two characters kylo and and ray yeah and those both those characters i'm not gonna lie i'm interested in them like i said i think they are carrying us without them this doesn't exist they are carrying us to the next film however at what expense because because this this series has never been about just two people yeah like there's not like a han solo like character that you care about in this film 
or Chewie like right. character who Chewie just didn't do anything the whole movie either. Like what the hell? Yeah. He just lost his best friend in the world and he spends the whole movie on the Millennium Falcon by himself with some like little penguins that are yelling the whole time. I felt it was bad for rushed. Him. It was, but I, I don't know how they would fit it into three films, all of this. Yeah. I, they might have bitten off oh, more than they could I'll tell do. you how. The entire storyline that Finn has with Rose, where they go to a planet to get the code breaker and then bring him back to the um, uh, the, the big uh, ship, um, the New Order ship or whatever, and then they fail at their whole thing, and then all of a sudden they just fly back to the Rebels and they're all right. That was a whole 40 minute part of this movie that we did not need at all. It had no, they had no impact on the story whatsoever, except giving those characters something to do while the people we cared about did something. It was yeah. awful um, because the Kylo Ren and the Ray storyline was amazing. It was really good when Kylo kills um, Snope on the bridge. And then you think you start to realize he didn't do it because he's a good character that was great storytelling and a great arc and such a moment. And then like the rest of the film just doesn't live up to that type of moment when it should like maybe. Yeah. I mean, I even had issues with that scene. I felt it was a little goofy when he was like, I can see everything he's thinking. (laughs) I can see it all. Oh, he hurt me. Yeah. yeah. I'm dead now. (laughs) I did not like that. I did not like that. And also Snoke seemed like he should have been an interesting character. And also the CGI made me feel like I was just watching like a, a dilapidated Teletubby and I just didn't know what was going on with that. I'm yeah. like, this we could do better than this in video games. Why is this happening? But anyway, we Ooh. I feel like you and I could like I could keep, I could do this. another 20 minutes. I'm there. I'm I'm in it. I I hated this so much that I, it, it's consumed me for three days now. My hate for it. Oh my goodness. Three well, days. I didn't. I I definitely was frustrated with it. I definitely did not enjoy the film as a whole, but I can see how it could possibly. And granted, I am holding on to hope here, everyone. A, but no. I feel as though it can be reestablished with the third film if they do things a certain way. I'm not going to place any bets, <laughs> but I also feel as though this is a film that might be able to just be removed where if you watch all the way through you don't have to watch this one which is disappointing because i was looking forward to it so much but it might be able to be just taken off yeah i i and like if they take it off they've wasted all these good characters like i'm so sad i woke up i was drinking coffee this morning and my girlfriend asked me like what was wrong and i just like why didn't she why didn't she just tell Poe about her plan to get everyone to the planet safely? <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about it. It's it's been sitting with me. It really irks me. So Star Wars, if you haven't seen it, um good luck with it. Let's, yeah. Good luck with it. But I don't know. Moving on. Lots of spoilers in here. We might have to we might have to split this cast up. So it's like spoilers <laughs> moving on. But really, you only have about a week with Star Wars, yeah. I feel like. If yeah. you didn't want Star Wars spoiled for real, you already saw it. You were in the theater. Like it didn't sell out like they, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But with that in the um giving spirit, it is the Christmas season, Monica. And here on the Bass Space Nomads, we have our annual Nomads. <laughs> Naughty and nice list for the year. Um, we do. So we added a few characters in here that are just either political, mm-hmm. like popular, uh, you know, disruptive characters. And then also we asked you all if you wanted to be a part of our naughty or nice list. Yep. And a few people bravely went in. They, they, they brought it. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is all these people from the community, uh, these figures that we've pulled, we took a look at their social media accounts. Um, their kind of history throughout 2017. We did. We dug. And not, we didn't. we did not just dig on the people that 
that opted in, we dug on pretty much everyone. Mm-hmm. Like it, any of the, even the celebrities that we put out there, we, we did a little bit of digging yeah. on. So we see you on Edinburgh, JK Rowling. Spoiler. Yeah. We see you on there. <laughs> <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, kind of give you a brief description about what they did in 2017, their tweets, uh, any kind of big events that went on in their lives, tell you if they're on the naughty or nice list, and then give them a game from our big Santa bag uh, for them to enjoy in the beginning of 2018. So they either get a naughty game, which is one that was not very well received uh-huh. or a nice game which is one that they should enjoy because apparently everyone else did mm-hmm. all right so the first person on the list on santa's little nomad list from the is, community is a as a community member yes <laughs> it is the worst terry um just the name itself the worst terry you should you shouldn't have high hopes uh for this character <laughs> But <laughs> for this person, um, but to be honest, we we looked through their user history and we, we saw that um, they almost they almost were on the nice Whoa. list because yeah. on December thirty first of two thousand and sixteen, Ooh, back machine. They told CNN New York E. <laughs> that they loved their grandma multiple times. I don't know what that was about, but it was very sweet. And <laughs> and then after that, but that was last year, that was 2016. So we yeah. have to start fresh with 2017. Um, the the worst Harry ended up going and, and tweeting multiple times. I think this one probably sums up um, the Twitter for 2017. Everyone keeps asking me why I don't have kids yet. I only have enough room in my life for one crybaby poo factory right now. Okay. And it's me. Oh. Um, <laughs> so Terry is, uh, has some really funny tweets out there. Definitely. But we had to put him on the naughty list because he's just had being be a little crybaby, you know? Um, and like, we love Terry. Like we've been at con- like a convention with Terry. He's a lot of fun. But you can't be uh, going through life not being able to handle a baby. And so we got the perfect naughty gift for you. We are going to give you, my friend, out of the bag. Let me reach into it. Uh, one, two, switch for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we're giving you this game because what EW lets us know is that by having players mimic milking cows in this game, you can pretend to be shaving. And the creepiest of all, a mini game that allows you to cradle the console while a baby cries on the screen. Fun? It's a party game. And it will end your party. <laughs> we scary. One, two, switch. That's your lump of coal, my friend. Yeah, that is your lump of coal. I love you, Terry, but um, you made it to the lot- naughty list. I'm sorry. You know you're going to end up. Don't act like you're suppressed. <laughs> Um, so next up, we have a political figure, not the one you're thinking of automatically, at least within the United States. Joe Biden? No, not that one either. <laughs> um, but we are talking about the vice president of the U.S. of A. The Mike honorable. Pence. The honorable gay basher, Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Straight out of Indiana. Straight out of Indiana. He is on the naughty list as well. Um, we are just not a fan of, of as as being Santa's little helpers yeah. this season. We are just not a fan of uh, gay bashing. So Mike has got to be on the naughty list. Not and Brian, what did he get? Oh, Mike Pence, because you look so goddamn weird and you look like a character creator and you have weird facial expressions and you don't know how to say certain words with your mouth, like you just kind of mangle them in your cheeks, we're going to give you Mass Effect and Dranma from Bioware because this game perfectly matches who you are as a person. (laughs) And there's not a hot fix coming your way to fix what you got going on. You're going to have to live with your stupid gay bashing face for the rest of your life. It's true. Now, moving on, we have another 
I wouldn't even call her a political figure. She's an author, J.K. Rowling, and she is an amazing author. Everyone knows mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling, and um, we wanted to get to know her better. And so we tried. Yeah. But she writes so much. Her. She retweets so much. And sometimes it seems like she's starting drama that could be pushed on but then there's like 50 other retweets and it's really convoluted and it's really difficult and i just feel like you know santa he can't deal with all of this and at some point you just have to make a call there's there's only so many elves you know there's only so much you can do there is and and like how does she have time to do anything what is she writing nowadays where she just has all this time to go on Twitter and just completely bash like all these causes that she's against, uh, retweeting like pe- like personal people. She's not just retweeting like big articles. It's like people who message her. She's like retweeting them, respond to them, getting up in their business, letting them know she doesn't like people on escalators holding you up. She's all around that life. And so, what are we gonna give her, Monica? We don't, we didn't really quite know. It was difficult to judge her because there was so much content. And so we gave up and we just put her on the nice list. So I guess if there's anything to learn from this, I guess if there's anything to learn from this, it's that if you really want to just get to the nice list, just make so (laughs) many statements and do so many things in a year that no one can deal with you. Um, so we gave up on her. She's on the nice list. And what are we giving her, Brian? We are going to give her Horizon Zero Dawn. Congratulations, J.K. A great game. This is a huge narrative game that you will spend your lifetime rating. <laughs> really Yay. excited for you. All right. Our next um, naughty or nice uh, individual is another listener and viewer a guest on the show and a guest yeah he was a guest on the show in 2017 his name is mandroid i love mandroid we went through a lot of mandroid's tweets Uh uh-huh there were some good months there were some bad months Mm. and it became all too complicated too and (laughs) after dealing with jk rowling it it started getting so tough that we realized that in our period of time trying to figure out whether he was naughty or nice krampus fucking got him krampus came along and just took him we had no time to decide what he was gonna get he just came along and uh destroyed mandroid's chances at a wonderful christmas from the nomads so there's no gift, there's no thought process, there's no nothing. Mandroid is dead. Krampus got him. It's over. God damn it, Krampus. We are, yeah, Krampus, you're ruining it. Mandroid, thanks for allowing us to dig through your tweets. <laughs> but Krampus gotcha. All right, uh, who's up next on our naughty or nice nomads list? Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect, the two-time champ, um, you know, really reached the peak of the streaming world in 2017. He won the Gamer Awards, like... Gamer Awards? Yeah, I forget the title that he actually won. Uh, Streamer of the Year type of thing? Content creator? Yeah, content, like, influential content creator or something like that. And, you know, 2017, really a breakout year for Dr. Disrespect. I remember seeing him at TwitchCon 2016, and he was able to just kind of walk around and not be bugged. You know, he wasn't a big streamer. And then he blew up, hitting 20,000 a year. And apparently uh, some women took notice of the doctor (laughs) because Dr. Disrespect had a hard year, and uh, he couldn't handle the pressures of fame. Uh, and wasn't faithful to his wife and his family. And so Dr. Disrespect ends up on the naughty list this year. It is true. He is on the naughty list. Brian also was like, people make mistakes. And it's I hard. said, no, it is hard. You know what? It's not that easy to be a decent human. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, everyone would be it. Right. So I am saying right here and now, Dr. Disrespect completely deserves to be on the naughty list. You don't get to cheat on your wife when you have a wife and children. 
and be on the nice list. Fuck you. I don't care how many people laughed at your shit. Um, however, I'm sure that that entire situation is situation is very tough mm-hmm. for everyone. Um, let it be a learning lesson to us all. Um, so what are we giving him, Brian? Uh, we're going to give Dr. Disrespect a dating simulator created by another Twitch female streamer called Dream Daddy. Uh, you know, Dr. Disrespect, maybe you need to give the uh, female gender a break for a little bit. And you're maybe you need a nice bear in your life. Dream Daddy's your opportunity to go in search of your uh, more masculine side. Uh, you also, when you when you break vows of this manner might find yourself needing to learn how to date again so mm. it could it could it could possibly be beneficial yeah. overall we're rebuilding so. mm-hmm. uh next up on our list we're going to take a trip uh away from the personalities and the community and just go um to the cold corporate route the next up on the list would have to be ea EA has had a very, very rough year that they just absolutely deserve. Probably the (laughs) greediest uh, gaming company around right now, making millions upon millions off their hard-earning players who... And we love shitting on EA. Oh, it's like... We really do. You know how at the office you have like that one toilet that you love going to because no one Mm -hmm. really knows? That's Mm -hmm. EA. You just Mm -hmm. love to snuggle up with that and just... Kind of shit all over what they fucking do. <laughs> this analogy got a little bit gross. I'm, I apologize, <laughs> but this is what EA is doing uh, to the community. Uh, so for EA, the game they're getting the lump of coal that they deserve is their own game, Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront Two. Congratulations, EA! You get what you made, and they should really just call it like Star Wars: The Last Jedi. It's one and the same, right there. Uh, they get to buy their own um, product after they've purchased it. Yeah. We're, we want to put them back in their own hell, mm-hmm. you know? And so they are on the naughty list and um, that's where they, they're landing is with their own, their own uh, inventions. Yeah. And don't worry if you don't like it, EA, just, just hold on and just buy your DLC that you have coming up a little bit later. And then you just start the cycle all over again. Eventually, right. you're going to have a game that you might like a little bit. Or you spent so much money on that you're going to say you like it because you don't want to feel silly. <laughs> yes, we've all been there. <laughs> Cell phone games. <laughs> How dare you? Okay, <laughs> so next up, we have another viewer, another um, listener to the channel. Techno Groovin. We did a lot of digging on Techno Groovin. And oh my gosh, Techno. Ooh. You, what? Nice. you are on the nice list. Ooh. Talking about net neutrality. Got it. Equal opportunity in so many different ways. There are posts about just like the treatment of women in the workforce. Not only that, but there are lots of retweets for streamers. And there are both men and women being retweeted by Techno Grooven. And not only that, but he cares about his friends. He's had friends that have had hard times. And he's told people, hey, my friend is I'm so proud of him. He's working through this, this like uh, bypass surgery or this or that. It's crazy. Techno, you are on the yeah. nice list. You are a stunning example for the rest of us on how to not be cynical, how to be positive and affect the community in a, in a great way. And for that, we're going to give you one of Santa's best gifts of the year. You're on the nice list and you, sir, can sit back and enjoy Zelda Breath of the Wild during the Christmas break. Yes, that's you. You win one of the most well-received games of the year. Um, And we really, really appreciate the fact that you participated. (laughs) You were so, I really tried to find dirt on you. I really did. (laughs) I did some digging and it was hard. So good, good job, Tech and Bourbon. Uh, next person up on our list would be the Twitch streaming UFC fighter extraordinaire, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. 
standing at five foot three. Ooh, I am absolutely like, you know, pound for pound, one of the best, if not the best UFC fighter of all time. And then he gets on and is a gamer. And he's not just a crappy gamer. He's a power gamer. And he loves to play. He loves to have fun. I've seen him walking around at TwitchCon, you know, just beautiful, uh, significant other. This guy is full of life. And you can just tell by being like just watching him. You can like he had this presence of where you just want to be around him. Also, it's really, really hard to put somebody on the naughty list if they're about the size of an elf. That, that's Monica, Money Mouse. That is not this guy. I I don't disrespect like that. I think that um, you're a wonderful height and you deserve whatever you get in life. He is a very hardworking gamer, though, in every single uh, aspect. And so we have put him on the nice list well deserved just if we could write his name twice we would i don't know if that's against the rules what game are we giving him brian we're gonna give mighty mouse johnson one of the best games of the year mario odyssey my friend you take mario out for one of the best rides he's had since the super nintendo (laughs) wonderful game do you think that mario and demetrius are around the same height Mm-mm. oh of course you don't okay nope well brian loves you i'm i'm okay um pulling out the the hard the hard truth demetrius um, is more like a luigi height you think i always figured luigi was more my height <laughs> you think am i, I always thought i had a chance are you the luigi to my mario is that what you're trying to tell me i, I think so oh. i don't know Okay, so um, the next up who we have is... Oh, who do you got coming up? Brian. Oh, from the community? From our community. It's you, Brian. I picked you. So, Um, where do I land? All right, you, I put... Okay, so I put you on the nice list. Yes. You are a, a great person, and I feel like 2017 has been a really big year for you. Um, and the game that I picked for you is Persona 5, um, mainly because the characters are um, powered by how well they're doing in real life. And I feel like you are on your way in a lot of different ways towards making these extravagant moves, and I'm really excited for you. You've made a lot of, of jumps this year um, outside of your your norm. Um, and then one of the things that <laughs> the Persona 5 is known for is the astounding beauty and depth. <laughs> and I just feel like you are a... a why are you running away? I don't, know. don't run away. I feel like you have a lot of depth behind you, and I also feel like this year you have a lot of moves. No, I do. <laughs> no, it's not a fat joke. It's not a fucking fat joke. I feel like this year you've made a lot of, of big moves for yourself. So I put yeah. you on the nice list, and I'm giving you Persona 5. Oh, uh, I can't wait to play it. I've been looking forward to it. I'm glad I didn't have to buy it for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, Monica... Yeah. The next person that's on the list. Yeah. It's Monica. Oh. One of the hosts of Backspace Nomads. Um, that's me. You know, um, I too think that 2017 was an amazing year um, for your release. Uh, and that, you know, a lot of people were anticipating and really loving what was going on. Okay. I'm going to give you Destiny 2. <laughs> You're on the naughty oh. list. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh. but don't take it the wrong way. It's a huge, it was a huge accomplishment, huge release. A lot of people bought it. A lot of people are enjoying Destiny 2. It's just. But then they were disappointed in it. Uh, uh, it's not so much that they're, they're disappointed. They just know that there's so much more that you can give and they can't wait for you to give that it's an anticipation not a disappointment i put hours and hours of work into what i can give with uh-huh 
Okay. We can't wait for the uh, 2018 DLC, Monica. Okay. I'll try my best. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Co-host. I hope you enjoy it. I really, I thought long and hard about the gift and I feel really good about it. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity to be better than who I am. <laughs> Naughty list for me. That's okay. I can deal with that. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, well, that's the Nomads Naughty and Nice list, the annual list that we do every year here on the Backspace Nomads. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy it. Can't wait for you to come. Um, maybe next year you guys can make the list if you... um want us to dig through all your social media and find out where you're going to be on it. Uh, Can't wait. But that's going to do it for episode 41 of the Backspace Nomads. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you want to check us out, you can find us on BackspaceNomads.com, our YouTube channel, Backspace No or YouTube.com forward slash Backspace Nomads. Monica's streaming a lot on Twitch.tv forward slash Backspace Nomads. And uh, with that, let's uh, take it out out of here. We'll see you guys in the next episode, 42, in the new year. That'll be uh, the first, right? Yeah, I'm so excited for the next episode, too. We have a big announcement that we're going to be making, and I'm really excited about it because we get to militarize all of our listeners. So please participate because we have an entire system in order to rewire your brains and make you our minions. That sounds so ominous. Get ready. Uh, That's going to do it. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Later, Nomads. Bye.